Hello, my name is Jim Ganya Penn, and I'd like to tell you about our zero energy home. Ever since I was a young man, I've been very intrigued by zero energy homes and having a home that just stood on its own without outside utilities and, and that type of thing. In college, I took an engineering curricula and I took a course in solar energy design, which gave me a lot of ideas. Uh, in 2009, well, first of all, uh, we had to put our dreams on hold throughout our life because uh, we raised two children. And then in 2009, we found ourselves empty nesters, and that's when we really started to pursue our dream. Uh, I did a lot of research. I looked into geothermal, solar photovoltaics, uh, sealed homes, heat recovery ventilators, earth bag homes, straw bale homes, you name it, I, we looked at it. Uh, finally, we went down to Taos, New Mexico, and we rented an earth ship in the earth ship community down there. Uh, we also did a number of tours of burned homes in the Colorado Springs area. Uh, my wife is very artistic, and she really liked the way art, artists, artistic designs were incorporated into the building of the earth ship homes and the burned earth homes. So our decision was made. We decided to go that route. The basic principle of the uh, zero energy uh, relies on six important properties, which makes it function as a near zero energy home. Concepts. The basic principle of the bermed earth passive solar home relies on six important building properties, which allow it to function as a zero energy or near zero energy home. First, it has glass on the south side, which allows sun intrusion deep into the home in winter. Secondly, the home is burned on the north, east, and west sides, which provides a natural cooling effect in the summer. Thirdly, the design has an extensive amount of thermal mass, a slab concrete floor, adobe interior walls, tile, massive berm walls, granite, etc. Fourth, the home is sealed. Every joint between studs and plywood was caulked. The glass is double pane, low E. The walls are a minimum two by six framing with insulation. The roof is supported by two by 16 TGIs and insulated with 12 inch bat. Two layers of ceiling poly were applied over the ceiling insulation. Fifth, electricity is from solar photovoltaics and a residential wind turbine, which is all net metered. Lastly, outdoor shades are utilized in the summer to shield the interior from the hot sun. Design and financial considerations. We purchased our design from Mike Sheely, who had designed about 30 to 40 burned earth homes in the Colorado Springs and surrounding area. We provided a sketch of our home to be. Sadly, Mike Sheely, the designer, passed away in 2016, but others have continued to use his design concepts. The design had to be submitted to Pikes Peak Regional Building Department for approval. I participated in a number of the meetings with the representative of PPRBD. It helped that others had blazed this trail ahead of me with the building department. I had the addresses of these homes with me so that unfamiliar inspectors could look them up. Because passive solar and wood burning are not allowed to be used as the primary heat sources in El Paso County, conventional heating had to be included in the design. I consulted with Mike Sheely, who stated, use the more, most affordable method that you can because you'll never need it. I performed a therm thermal envelope analysis and installed four independent thermostat controlled wall heaters, which was approved by PPRBD. Mike knew what he was talking about, as the four 220-volt circuit breakers are usually in the off position. We broke ground in our Tireville home in April of 2011 and got our occupancy permit in early January 2012. I acted as general contractor for the build and had a lot of consulting help from the designer and also a number of very knowledgeable contractors. My wife and I participated in many of the construction phases. Since I had recently retired, I was able to work and oversee the contractors every day. The biggest design concern for this style of home is fire egresses. In a conventional home, fire egress is usually through the bedroom windows. Because of the berming, there are no bedroom windows in this design. 
The building department required that the bedrooms be on the ends of the earthship near the two entrances and the entrance doors served as egresses. It should be noted that there are two other obstacles that are sometimes faced with this design. First, financial institutions are very reluctant to give loans for unconventional building. We were able to use the equity from our previous homes to pay for most of the construction without loans. Secondly, some have had trouble getting insurance companies to insure unconventional homes. We had no problem with this as a State Farm representative visited the home and immediately provided a reasonable quote. Berming. There are two methods that have been used for bermed homes in this area. We utilize the tire bale method. The other method involves pounding dirt into individual tires. That is a very physical activity. We got our tire bales from tire recyclers in South Denver. The bales weigh about a ton each and consist of about 80 to 120 tires, machine compressed and bound by heavy gauge wire. We hired excavators to dig out our gently sloped land into a level plane required for the setting of the tire bales. Our tire bales were stacked using a skid steer with a fork attachment. The bales were stacked like bricks, exactly according to the design, which consisted of about 180 tire bales. Half bales were utilized on the ends to fill in the gaps that result from a brick design. The design called for an exact number of bales, including wing walls at the ends to aid in drainage. After all the bales were stacked in one day, the structure looked like this. We also built a retaining wall out of half bales. In all, there are about 20,000 tires behind our home, which is quite extraordinary when one considers the tires are such a disposable problem. At the time of our build in 2011, the tire bales were free, but we had to pay for shipping, which was about $3,500 for seven semi-loads. They have since started charging a nominal fee for the tire bales, but shipping will still be the major expense. The design assumes that the bales are five foot by five foot by two and a half foot high, but they are not all uniform, and we found that they were slightly larger than that. As such, our 1975 square foot design turned out to be 2350 square feet. We realized this after the stacking and adjusted our master bedroom and living room with additional space. It helped that I was the general contractor for the build because other than a little additional framing lumber, we didn't incur any added expense. This would normally not be the case with home instruction with that kind of variance. This also left room for windows above the berm back wall and we paid the building department for a variance to install those in lieu of the original skylight design. It should be noted that we had to sign a form document provided by PPRBD that in the event that we don't follow through with our build, we are responsible to, to dispose of all the tires. Evidently, they had some history of problems with tire structures, financing, and the inability to finish projects. This is just another caution about having your ducks in a row before starting one of these, before starting one of these builds. Also, expect neighbors to show a high degree of concern when you start unloading tire bales. Be sure to tell them that your home will be the nicest in the area. Our home was built on a purchased five and a half acre lot, which already had electric service to the area. We later bought a second six acre lot in, a, in an effort to keep our southern view unobstructed. Foundation drain. A foundation drain is mandatory and should be part of the design. Here one can see the massive number of tires that are recycled in this build. Most burned earth passive solar homes face south. However, in warm tropical climates, north facing burned earth homes have been built for the cooling effect. Although less expensive designs sometimes use a mix of discarded household glass, such as sliding glass doors, most homes use some type of commercial glazing system for these homes. Our home has 18 46 inch by 76 inch glass sections. That's a standard very affordable size. Uh, there's also small glass and crank operating awning windows underneath the large glass. 
There are two options for the glass, either vertical or angled. Most of the homes in this design use an angled glass installation. This works well in the winter because the sun can penetrate 25 to 35 feet into the home, providing heating. However, there is a trade-off. Vertically installed glass will also allow sun intrusion, but not to the same extent. Most owners of these homes will tell you that heating the home is seldom a problem, even in climates where the temperatures routinely drop to 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit at night. Almost invariably, you will hear that they open windows even in December, January, and February during the day because it gets so warm. It's important to note that no window or glass manufacturer will warranty their product, with the exception of skylights, in an angled installation. I'm going to repeat that. No window or glass manufacturer will, will warranty their product with an angled installation. Typically, they will leak. Most owners learn how to eliminate or minimize leaking through creative flashing techniques, caulking, and even modifications to the windows. Most people are unaware that standard windows are designed with leakage in mind and that weep holes divert leaked water back outside. These design weep holes are ineffective in an angle design. I drilled holes in the awning windows and inserted small plastic tubes to provide this weep, weep hole functionality. I drilled holes in, in our awning windows and installed small plastic tubes to, pro to provide this weep hole functionality. All this said, most burned earth homes have the angle design. If I had it to do over again, I would use the vertical design, mainly to retain the window warranty and to eliminate some of the headaches. The decision to use vertical or angle glass must be made prior to the design phase. Thermal mass, use extensively. In this style of home, the amount of thermal mass that you use will be the difference between a zero energy home and a near zero energy home. Thermal mass keeps you comfortable, warm in the winter and cool in the summer. The sun enters and heats up the walls, tile, the floor, and everything else in the house, even the shampoo bottle in your shower. We use tile extensively. My artistic wife did a number of mosaic tile designs. We got all the tile at Habitat for Humanity at a drastically reduced price. Have fun with the thermal mass. We shoved rocks into the gaps between the tire bales. A friend built a beautiful burned home with an all tile floor. We used a concrete slab with an acid etched floor. We found that granite countertops were more affordable than some of the composites and stone sinks were installed in the master bath. Somebody asked me, why do you use tires in this design? You could accomplish the same thing by using a rebar, reinforced concrete wall like in a conventional basement. It's a good question, but there's a better answer. The, the tire bales have insulated properties and thermal mass. Whether one uses the rammed earth individual tires or the tire bale, the result is the same. The wall has about an R60 insulation value. The regional building department now requires that basement walls be insulated. There is too much cold intrusion through basement walls. That's why people avoid basements in the winter. Not only do the tires provide the insulation, but they provide an incredible amount of thermal mass. Most owners talk about the noticeable heat which starts radiating from the walls once the interior starts to cool off. Even without any external heat on a frigid 0 to 10 degree Fahrenheit evening, the home will only drop to the low 60s at night. There is no question that most of the heat is lost through the glass, but the thermal mass replaces the heat quite nicely. We have a very efficient wood-burning stove equipped with a catalytic converter. Without any external heating, we only light about six fires per year. It should be noted, however, that Colorado has a climate with 320 sun days per year. Now let's talk about cooling. Prior to our build, it was recommended by a HERS auditor to insulate our concrete slab floor. I spoke to my designer and he said, these people don't understand this style of home. 
don't do it. I was wise to listen to my designer, who lived in a burned earth home for over 20 years. The floor provides valuable cooling in the summer. Every burned earth home owner will tell you that cooling is more of a challenge than heating. The burned walls help to maintain a cool temperature also. The following photos show the back of the structure before and after burning. Note that two layers of number six poly are attached over the tire bales prior to the burning. Outdoor shades are a must. Ours are simple, manually drawn shades. In the summer, we let them down in the morning and take them up in the evening and ventilate the house. We are lucky to have the cool Colorado evening where temperatures usually drop to the low 60s, even in the hottest months. The cool air enters the home and cools all the walls, tile, and other thermal mass, even that shampoo bottle. Once the shades are lowered, the interior stays cool all day. People that visit our home are amazed that there is no air conditioning. This home has no forced air at all. It should be mentioned that in more humid climates, dehumidification may be necessary. Also, a heat recovery ventilator can also be utilized to avoid stale air. We have pets, so doors are open frequently, and this is not much of an issue. Construction techniques. I want to say one thing about tire bales. They are very difficult to work with. We shotcreted over the tire bales. What that is, is a pressurized concrete application. The concrete tended to fall off where the tire bales were slanted inward and had to man manually be reapplied. Also, screws do not want to hold to tire bales. If you're lucky, you'll hit a st steel belt and the screw will set easily. After the bales are stacked, the next step is to install the bond beam. The bond beam consists of three pieces of reinforced rebar which go around the entire perimeter along the top of the back wall and up and down the sides. Before pouring the concrete, forms have to be attached to the tire bales and any gaps must be filled in to prevent all the concrete from pouring through into the bales. I hired a recently retired concrete worker who when he scoped the job said, you know, this will be fun. It will be worth coming out of retirement. These people did an amazing job. A couple of gentlemen got a little frustrated working with the bales, but overall, this was an A plus effort. Once their forms were up, they used small rocks, uh, better known as riprap, to layer on the top of the bales and prevent the concrete from flowing downward. Once the concrete is poured, while wet, J-bolts are placed in the wet concrete with threads pointing outward. The J-bolts are used to attach the pressure-treated sill plate. After that, the construction techniques are fairly conventional. A crane was used to drop a massive Versalam beam into pre-constructed beam pockets. I utilized a master carpenter who had built this kind of home before. He charged by the hour and split time between my job and his normal commercial work. This worked well because he often had to leave and my wife and I would finish up certain tasks saving a lot of money. He would return and inspect all work. The master carpenter was incredibly adept in his field and he was invaluable in leading the effort to attach the frame wall for the front glass to the side walls and the subsequent installation of the 2x16 TGIs. He also knew all the ins and outs of what the inspectors would look for, and he always erred on the side of too much reinforcement. Electrical. Many of our friends who have burned earth homes utilize propane for cooking. Many are in the mountains and they use battery backup for their solar PVs. Solar PV systems are prevalent in every burned earth home that I've seen. Technically, one wouldn't need solar PVs and would still reap the savings from the design. Because our home is all electric, we decided on both photovoltaics, the solar PVs, and a residential wind turbine. As mentioned earlier, electric service boxes were already connected in this area prior to our land purchase so we decided to go with net metering through the local utility. 
There is a monthly fixed fee, but we have no storage batteries or other power storage systems. At the end of the year, we are credited if we generate a surplus. We have no propane or other external fuels. We have an electric stove, refrigerator, washer, dryer, and hot water heater. Our hot water heater is a hybrid hot water heater. It has a refrigerant that pulls the heat from the air to heat the water. If usage is such that it can't keep up, there is an electric coil that turns on. As such, we installed the hot water heater next to the warm windows behind a pony wall. The warm front window area is also great for drying clothes, so we often hang clothes from a retractable clothesline instead of using the dryer. For our first five years in the home, we generated the surplus every year. Then I got a Chevy Volt, and now the surplus is gone, but the usage part of the bill is still only about $50 per month. I just got a quote for an additional 7.6 kilowatts of photovoltaics. That's a huge system. I may install this on the garage roof along with a 220 volt garage outlet. I'm convinced that electric cars are here to stay. Summary. I have to say that we love our home. We have always lived in well-built conventional homes and we find that our quality of life has improved dramatically in this home. And I can cite five reasons why I make this claim. The five reasons are this. First are the five foot thick bermed walls. This, this makes the house extremely quiet. Even the loudest ambient noises such as trucks, airplanes, etc. are buffered. Secondly, the views are just tremendous. We enjoy sitting at the table over a cup of coffee in the morning, looking out the large windows at the vista. On a clear day, we can see the Spanish peaks, which are almost 150 miles away. Rabbits, quail, and other wildlife are abundant. If you like to camp, living here is akin to camping out while living indoors. The third reason is a real obvious one. There are no utility bills and you have the satisfaction that the house is self-sufficient. Fourth, with all the incoming light, indoor plants flourish. I mean, they flourish at an entirely different level to what we were accustomed. Herbs and garden starter plants add an amazing aroma to the house. The fifth reason we love this home is that there is no forced air. And forced air, you have all this, the health concerns due to the dust and, uh, and, and just the air constantly going through the dirty ductwork. If you would like more information on this style of home, I encourage you to visit our Facebook site called Little Burned House on the Prairie. And you can contact me through there and I'd be glad to answer any other questions. Thank you very much for your time.